St. Eloy in his shop, also known as A Goldsmith in His Shop, is a 1449 painting by Belgian painter Petrus Christus, who lived from 1410 to 1475, and was most likely commissioned by the Duke of Gelders as a gift for the couple standing behind St. Eloy, Mary and James II. Interestingly enough, did you know that another possible theory about the commissioning of this painting was that it was commissioned by the Goldsmiths Guild of Bruges as an advertisement? Imagine that. This painting was created on an oak panel using oil paints and measures to 3 foot 3 inches by 2 foot 9 inches. The advanced oil painting techniques, realistic expressive details, and wood canvas classify this piece squarely into the Northern Renaissance period, which refers to the European Renaissance that occurred north of the Alps during the 15th century. Evidence of the time period comes from the Burgundian Gold Ducats, also known as the Gold Angels of King Henry VI of England, who ruled from 1422 to 1461, and then again from 1470 to 1471. Additionally, the woman behind the table is wearing a double-horned headdress, considered fashionable from 1250 to 1500. In terms of style, this painting is Baroque, evident by the employment of plentiful and intricate ornamentation. In the foreground of the painting, there are bigger objects and brighter colors, whereas the background has obscure colors and smaller objects. The change in chiaroscuro, an Italian term for using a contrast between light and dark, and the change in size creates a linear perspective and shadowing, making the painting seem more realistic overall. Moreover, most objects in the painting are smooth in real life, so Christus also created a smooth texture throughout the painting. Some scholars have interpreted this painting to be a vocational piece focusing on the man in the bright red-orange robe sitting down in the center, who was long believed to be St. Eligius, also known as St. Eloy, the patron saint of goldsmiths, thus the name of the piece, a goldsmith in his shop. This painting is also a possible portrait of St. Eloy because technical analysis of the painting revealed that the underdrawings of the goldsmith's face were far more detailed than those of the other individuals. Besides the seated goldsmith, there are four other people in this painting. Two elegantly dressed individuals stand directly behind the goldsmith, and they are a betrothed couple because they are weighing out two gold wedding rings, which is why they are in the goldsmith's shop to begin with. The goldsmith's shop also has a box of rings and two bags of precious stones on the shelf behind the goldsmith, along with many other items which we will get into later. Additionally, there is a girdle on the table which was a symbol of mat matrimony and chastity during this era and was often gifted as a wedding gift. The standing man protectively embraces the woman by the shoulder. This couple is aristocratic. The man wears a badge identifying himself as a member of the court of the Duke of Gelders, a center east province in the Netherlands, the country that borders Belgium, and the woman wears the expensive clothing of the ladies of the French queen. The difference in countries of origin further implicates that their marriage is arranged for political reasons of the aristocracy. Remember I mentioned five total people in the painting? We talked about three, but what about the other two? For that, we need to look at the convex mirror located at the table in the bottom right corner. Christos employs pictorial illusionism with the convex mirror because it extends the viewer's notion of space to outside of the picture frame, one of the signature editions of Jan van Eyck. Petrus Christos was a disciple and apprentice of Jan van Eyck, another Belgian painter who was much more famous. Jan van Eyck was best known for inventing oil paintings and he included a convex mirror in one of his most notable paintings, the portrait of Giovanni Arnolfini as well. Eek influenced many painters afterwards, including Christus. Back to the goldsmith in a shop, though, the mirror depicts two men standing on a street outside who are dressed in common and rather drab clothing compared to the people in the focus of the painting, indicating that they are commoners. One of the men is also holding a falcon on his forearm. This brings me to symbolism. The falcon was often seen as a symbol of pride and greed. As mentioned earlier, the girdle on the table represents matrimony and chastity. There is a crystal reliquary, which is a container of holy relics, made with a gold dome and a ruby and amethyst pelican on the shelf behind the goldsmith. The red coral and serpent's tongue, which is actually fossilized shark teeth, were superstitious objects believed to ward off the evil eye. The coconut cup was used to test for poison, while the porphyry and rock crystal was used to test precious stones and gold, like the ornaments on the black cloth. On the top shelf, there are rosary beads and a belt present, which is a possible influence from Roger van der Weyden's portrait. Additionally, there are two silver flagons, vessels that carry drinks like wine, which are similar to the one used at the Eucharist, and a covered cup on the top shelf. Are you starting to notice a pattern throughout the painting? If so, that's great! You are on your way to becoming a Northern Renaissance scholar because there indeed is a theme to this painting. Religion. 
Netherlands and Belgium were ecclesiastical at the time, or followers of the Christian church and clergy. As a result, Christus created a painting with heavy religious emphasis. It is very likely that the Duke of Gelders, the commissioner, was also a devout Christian. From Christus's point of view, he created a painting depicting a moral comparison between the imperfect world of the viewer versus the world of balance and virtue. Inside the goldsmith's shop, there are a variety of items that imply balance. First off, the balance itself. This is being used by the goldsmith to ensure he correctly measures the gold ring's weight. Additionally, he is looking up, likely at a conversion table that hangs above the wall near the roof. This is further ensuring that the goldsmith is being honest in his trade of expensive and precious stones. The viewer's world is imperfect because of the convex mirror Christus included. This gives us as viewers a sense of the world outside the shop where sins like pride and greed fly about. The commoners holding the falcon seem to be looking towards the rich couple with pride and greed, and perhaps envy too. So is Christus saying that society at large is prideful and greedy as a result of the wealth gap? At the same time, Christus is implying Mary and James II, the aristocratic couple, do not know of the outside commoners since their attention is so focused on the gold. Perhaps Christus is saying that the aristocrats are prideful and greedy after their incessant mission for more and more material wealth, and thus they make society prideful and greedy. By adding religious elements to the painting, Christus can either mean that religion perpetuates ethical behavior or propels sinful behavior. In either case, Christus maintains his pattern of enigma and secrecy, and scholars may never be able to decipher what Christus truly meant. So, what do you think Christus meant in his painting? While you try to figure out Christus' legacy means for you, let's discuss it on a larger scale. This painting was the first secular piece of Netherlandish art. This was the first painting to perhaps challenge the conventional acceptance of Christianity and related religion to socioeconomic problems. Then again, this insinuation may never be confirmed due, the, due to the aforementioned enigmatic nature of the painting. Thank you for your time and attention, ladies and gentlemen. I'm done now, so you can all relax your hands.